I'm gonna keep it fairly short and uh, just to make a couple of comments to the methodology to which I'm using to determine the winners and the uh, teams that are going to pass the group stage. We're looking at the overall strength of the teams, of course we are, um, but the second probably the second most important thing is the matchups within the group and the third most important thing uh, would be the actual schedule which I don't think too many people are actually taking into account but I do think it's it's important and it does play a role in uh, in the tournament system anyway let's not waste too much time and let's dive into it so the Group A, we have Netherlands, Senegal, Ecuador and Qatar. Qatar being the host nation and with that being the seeded one, well top pot team. Um, so I actually wanted to make this video a bit earlier but then I kept delaying it and it actually ended up being a good thing because we have some players injured and some, some of the rosters being uh, changed. So that actually does play a major role into this and it, originally I was going to go for Senegal to actually advance from this group but now they lost Mane so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they are actually the same team without him and with that I think we're going to go with the Netherlands being the top dog here. I think they're they're the most stable team of all the four teams and I also believe that people are really underestimating Qatar. Um, pr they're probably basing them on like Saudi Arabia's performances in the pro past World Cups and stuff like that so I think the I think Qatar is probably significantly better team than Saudi Arabia is and also being a host nation I'd actually go, gonna go as a surprise pick Qatar finishing second in the group and actually advancing to the second round and then Ecuador and Senegal I'm, I'm not simply not sure what to expect from Ecuador I think Senegal is going to slightly underperform a bit compared to what they did in qualifications and um, it should still have enough to beat Ecuador honestly but it's going to be tough I think I'm gonna just put Senegal at third and Ecuador is uh, probably going to be the last one in the group I think one wild game could potentially earn Senegal three, three points so you know maybe but the again the opening match for Ecuador is against Qatar. Qatar is going to be motivated and uh, is probably going to do their best match in that one. So in the opening game, and that that's where the schedule factor I think comes into play. Okay, so Group B, I think this is probably probably the the weakest group in the entire group stage. We have England, uh, Iran, USA and Wales and without thinking too much I'm putting England on top not because England is has way more quality than any other team in this group which they probably do but I simply don't see any of the other teams except for maybe Wales beating England so if any of the other teams can actually beat England it's going to be Wales I don't see Iran or USA doing that and that's why I also am putting Wales as a second here to progress um, it was kinda close call between Iran and Wales I'm still maybe putting Iran here as second simply because now that they have Carlos Queiroz back um, I have a lot more confidence in them but I don't think they have enough firepower all three of these teams are very defensive oriented and I do not expect too many goals from them um, I think Wales is just a bit more consistent than uh, than the other two 
So that's it for group B. We're moving to group C, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. Um, I don't think any of these teams have actually enough to cause Argentina any problems. They could snatch a draw, but I don't see them beating Argentina, so Argentina is going to finish on top. I think Saudi Arabia is definitely guaranteed to be last here. Um, but Mexico and Poland, I think it's a very tough call. It's, I think, 50-50 between those two. Poland kind of reminds me of Serbia in the past years, where they do have the quality, but they keep underperforming. Uh, Mexico, on the other hand, I'd usually pick them to do well in World Cups, and they actually do progress in most of the World Cups they do enter. But somehow I do not have this sort of confidence in the current team. And I think Poland, if they're ever going to make it out of the group stage, it has to be this year. I think Poland can actually do it um, ahead of Mexico here. But it's going to be a very tough call. A very close one. Um, I, I just think Mexico could potentially slip against Saudi Arabia and get the draw there. Well, Poland might not. But then again, it's also Poland tends to sometimes, again, play much poorer than they are expected to, so it's a questionable call. Anyway, Group D, we have France, Australia, Denmark and Tunis, or Tunisia. Um, so definitely going to put Australia as the last. It's a very weak generation of Australia football here. And originally, a couple of months ago, when I thought about this group, I was sure that Denmark would actually top it. I think Denmark is probably the best European squad in terms of form right now. And I still think they, they're going to be to go very, um, very late in the tournament, but... I'm not sure they're going to top this group, even though they. it seems like they can do really well against France. And uh, now France without Benzema is not the same team. Um, it's just I think that France has overall a bit more firepower. And if they do draw the match against Denmark, it's probably going to go down to goal difference and goal scored. So I think France has a small advantage there. So I'm going to put... France on top and Denmark second. Tunis, it's not impossible that they could surprise France or either France or Denmark, but I think it's going to take quite a bit from them, and I don't think I don't see them doing that well twice. So even if they get a good result against one of these teams, can they actually con be consistent in this tournament? That's the question for me. They do have a quite a bit of quality but I think Denmark is simply simply superior in that in that segment of, in simply being consistent and I I really love love the way they play very aggressive style a lot of uh, pressing and it's a really nice th team to watch anyway group E Spain Costa Rica Gr Germany and Japan I almost uh, <laughs> to say Greece, well, it's of course Germany. This is actually one of the most boring groups. I do not think any of these teams are at their best right now. I think throughout previous World Cups and competitions, we've seen all of these teams being on a much higher level. And right now if I would have to go for somebody to top the group I think Germany has to be the one um, there is not much difference between Germany and Spain in terms of overall quality I think Spain has better midfield but I, I, they've been struggling with scoring lately and I think that that might cost them in this World Cup 
So the, the, they're still using the Alvar Alvaro Morata, right, as a primary target man, and he seems to he seems to struggle quite a bit lately. Although he has been getting better, but it just I'm not sure if the way the Spain tries to play does suit him. Anyway, if there is a team to surprise Spain, it could be Japan. It doesn't matter. It, that that doesn't mean that Japan cannot get points against Germany. It, I just see Germany a bit more consistent than Spain in terms of just scoring, and that's why I'm putting Germany on top here. But I don't think Japan is ready right now to to actually progress in this group. It's not a again. It's not a very exciting group, but I don't think Japan has that quality. And then Costa Rica. I think Costa Rica is just gonna lose all the matches. Perhaps draw against Japan, but I'd I'd be very surprised if they get more than two points in this group. Um, they the the only way they could get some points is if they get a nil nil draw or one one draw where they actually just frustrate their opponents which could happen with Spain could also happen with Germany we've seen Germany slip a couple of times in the past two or three years and I'm not obviously not counting the previous World Cup because it's a bit different team different coach I think Germany is getting better but they're still not at the same level okay so let's move to group F we have Belgium, Canada, Morocco and Croatia and initially I thought this was a very exciting group but honestly I don't think so anymore I've been kinda thinking less and less of Canada I thought they could maybe cause an upset and make this group a bit more interesting but more the more I think about them I, I get more convinced that they are actually not not that great, and I think Belgium is just going to top this group. Even though I think Croatia is probably a better team overall than Belgium, I think Belgium again, just like France and Denmark, Belgium just has a bit more firepower. Uh, Croatia without Mandzukic, I think it's a bit different team. So. Now Morocco is probably the team to cause an upset here, but I don't think they have enough. And it would be a very like a, it would be a really major result if they actually manage to beat Croatia or Belgium. And I think they will need to beat them. Because if it, if it comes to the goal difference, I, I could maybe see them having a better goal difference than Croatia, but I don't think... I think Belgium is going to smash Canada and uh, get a lot of uh, goals in that match. So yeah, Croatia second and Morocco third. Group G, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland and Cameroon. I wasn't really sure what to expect from Cameroon. So Brazil is definitely topping this group. Even if they drop some points, I think they will simply outscore Serbia and Switzerland in other matches. And Cameroon is definitely the last one for me. So initially, when the groups were drawn, I was I thought, well, damn. I don't like playing against Switzerland. I think there is no team in the world that actually likes playing against Switzerland because they have a very boring style of football that involves a lot of just, you know, holding. And they're not great at anything, but they're not bad at anything either. So, like, they're a very consistent team and it's hard to, hard to beat them, but when it comes to to attacking they're also not a very exciting team but now looking at this some some of the previous matches in the last two years they've played they're not really convincing even that victory against france in the euros i think it was more of a france slipping than actually switzerland playing really well they did play well but 
I think it was more of a France moment than actually Swiss. So, and then comparing this group to the pre to to the previous one in the World Cup in Russia, I think Serbia is much better now, and Switzerland is a sli slightly worse team than they were. And again, that was a really close match with some questionable refereeing. So I think it's going to be Serbia second and Switzerland third, and Cameroon last. I'm, I'd actually not be too surprised, honestly, if Cameroon manages to win against Switzerland. Or get some better results. But th th they're a really wild team. I think Switzerland has been overperforming so far in last couple of competitions and this might be their time to to actually drop okay so group g group h sorry portugal ghana uruguay and korea and i was going to go for portugal and uruguay but ghana actually surprised me really quite a bit in the friendly match and Korea, I don't think they have a chance, even though they, they have a much more talented team now than they ever had, even in the Japan and Korea World Cup. I do not see them going through this group, and I think they're probably going to finish bottom. Um, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay... I think Portugal and Uruguay are two teams that can actually beat anybody in the world with the right play. But they're not too consistent in terms of beating uh, teams that are similar to them. I think both teams can be extremely dangerous when going into later stages of the tournament, but I'm not sure who to pick here they're very similar in style I think Portugal might just not be that good right now for the only reason that I think Fernando Santos is not going to take Ronaldo off if he underperforms and I think that might be costing Portugal um, Despite Ronaldo being in the top form for his age and, uh, you know, obviously he hasn't played much in this season. I, I still feel like he's not really fully prepared for 90 minutes. I think he can uh, play quite effectively for 70 minutes, but after that he's kind of a bit lost. And Portugal can slip points in those last 20 to 15 minutes. Not solely due to Ronaldo's playing bad, but just overall, I do not see them being so clinical anymore like they used to be when Fernando Santos initially took this team. And um, Ghana and Uruguay, I think Ghana has really bad matchups here with Portugal and Uruguay. I don't think Ghana is necessarily weaker team in terms of quality but it's simply bad matchups for them because Portugal and Uruguay are both initially defensive teams and they're trying to counter-attack so I think th this is going to be a very interesting group though I think Uruguay finishes first here and Portugal finishes second Ghana third Korea so yeah Benning Ecuador to win? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I wouldn't count it out. I think Qatar will win. Um, I, I still think most people are just underestimating Qatar. Uh, they're, they're not that bad of a side. Like, I wasn't initially when I saw this group, I was thinking, okay, wait, Senegal's actually really good. And Ecuador, 
I'm not too sure what to think of them because South American qualifications are very tough but then again they haven't managed to win on a really big away game game so how much of it is them just playing really well at home I'm not too sure so I was originally going to put Senegal, I actually completely flipped this group and put Senegal and Ecuador to progress here because Netherlands, I think Netherlands is going to be the top team in the next World Cup but right now I'm not sure they're there yet I think they are going to progress from the group but then they're they're probably in for early exit like even, even the, I think they match up with Wales, right? And even against Wales, I think they, they might struggle. Because they're really, they're really good at, at beating weaker teams, but I'm not sure they're, they're good enough to consistently play well against teams of their level. But yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's it. I'm just I was just gonna make this this sh uh, short one, and I'll do the one for round of sixteen. And who knows? I might actually do it for every day. Um, just analyzing the group, the the matches quickly, because I'm probably gonna end up watching all the games. Not working right now, so I can afford it, I guess. Anyways, that's it for now. Uh, we have a Victoria 2 stream in, what what is it, 4 hours? Yeah. What well, my thoughts on, thoughts on Vika 3? I'm actually going to release a video on that. I do not like it right now. Actually, I, I might have gotten a bit burned out of it. Because when the, when it was released, I was playing it 24 or 7 for like 2 weeks. Um, but it feels a bit shallow. I don't think that it has enough content in, the, in it. You know, looking at the groups right now, I think I've mostly picked uh, favorites to progress. And I'm waiting to see who is actually going to surprise me. Um... The most likely ones that could progress, I think this could happen. This can definitely happen. Hmm.